and then we're going to so we're recording this um so if you're just watching this later on welcome this is our weekly webinar today we're going to be talking about adaptive and authentic leadership but before we get into all that i'd like us to get to the beginning and have an opening prayer so who would like to uh, to pray for us um just raise your hand i'll activate your mic and then you can pray for us opening prayer anyone um i'm going with a lady so we are still in march so we're priority, of course ladies over men <laughs> okay good, good good uh volunteer going once going twice there might be gifts here going once going twice okay good 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 i'm going to ask um fiona if you could kindly unmute mic and pray for us and then we'll jump in um thank sorry sorry sam thank you for inviting me to pray um let us pray um heavenly father we are grateful for all you've done for us and all you're going to do we say thank you for this opportunity to be in this webinar to learn we thank you for AMI and we thank you for COPBank for facilitating um, these sessions for us. We pray that as we start this session, anything that needs to be said is said. What, it needs, what we need to learn is learned. And we also pray that you may open our minds so that we are receptive to that which is ahead. We pray this, believing and trusting. Amen. Yeah. Amen. All right, go ahead. Please put the the amen in the chat. Oscar, I see you. Lamek, I see you. Uh, Omari, I see you. Good, good, good. This is the energy we're looking for. All right, so officially, welcome to today's session. We've just said the prayer. And uh, I'll bring our attention back to the topic of the day. So adaptive and authentic leadership. So you're probably wondering, okay, so maybe why is this important? If you're wondering why this is important, then I think you're in, in a fairly different um, economy than most of us, because most of us find that we have dealt with so much change. This is all about change, of course. We're dealing with so much change just when you're, you know, it's sort of like the period of uh, lockdowns. Yeah, from one lockdown, then you're getting back up and there's, oh, another lockdown. And then you're going up, then, ah, chances of another lockdown. What are we doing? What are we? And you want everything to just be stable. The unfortunate thing is, well, someone said um, change is the only thing that is constant. So we have to, as leaders, what where does that put us? How do you run your business? How do you lead in your business? How do you lead your teams? How do you manage your projects with all the change that is happening? Right now, we are dealing with strikes. How does um, lots of people's shops have been closed for the for that for over that period, and there's income that has been missed out on and. Everything is important, but at the same time, you're trying to make sure you balance where you are. So where do you go? And we have to fall back on our skills for adaptivity, but at the same time, we want to be authentic. Today, we have a speaker who is going to do justice to this topic. He's very experienced, and I will be letting you know who that is. Of course, you know, it's Joseph Kashira, but I will be introducing him shortly. Before we get too far down that road, though, I want to take a step back and uh, and uh, walk you through the agenda. We hear from... Uh, Peter Dumia to just tell us a little bit about this. What are we doing here? Why is this important to Cop Bank? And then we'll jump into our discussion. All right? Good. So we'll have a quick welcome note from Peter. We'll have a, a conversation with our guest speaker. Don't forget to put your, Q, your question in the chat section or in the QA. And then we'll get into a COP section and uh, we'll wrap it up after that. So it's an hour and a half. We'll be together for the next maybe hour and 15 and we'll call it uh, morning, right? Okay, so right now I want to invite Peter, give us uh, a bit of a welcome note um, to, to everyone who's here. Peter, over to you, sir. I confirm that you can hear me. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you, Sam, and uh, thank you so much, our dear customers, for joining this session. Uh, good morning. Uh, all our customers and the participants uh, who are in this session. Uh, we want to take this opportunity to really welcome you again. It's another Thursday uh, on 23rd of March, uh, 2023. This is where we always meet at 11 a.m. 
at 12.30 every Thursday just to have a discussion with our customers and we are so much uh, delighted to have you again in this session. Let me thank you so much because our customers have been giving us a lot of feedback on the usefulness of this session. We've been able to get a number of emails, a number of calls, uh, just uh, you letting us know that uh, you found these sessions very, very uh, important into your businesses. So uh, thank you so much for joining this particular session. And uh, I know there could be new uh, customers or new participants in this session. We really want to welcome you to be part of this journey that we want to have uh, every uh, session, every Thursday, a session that uh, will run up to August uh, or September in this year. Um, again, I really to welcome and appreciate uh, AMI, African Management Institute team, uh, who have always been with us in this particular session. Uh, and again, uh, making it very, very, very relevant and uh, looking for us very, very good speakers and facilitating this session. We really appreciate you. Uh, of course, we have speakers that have been together with us. And um, today we also have a very good speaker uh, and, and we are happy to have all of you in this particular session. So uh, some have just tried to ask ourselves, why then do we do these uh, sessions every Thursday as a bank? And uh, just as a reminder to us, I know a number of us have been to these sessions and a reminder to those who've been with us and for those who are joining for the first time is to tell us that uh, we know and we acknowledge that uh, businesses will always require management skills and critical information and tools that, that you know, will help uh, to scale our businesses to the next level. And that is why CoBank have you know, decided to facilitate these sessions uh, together with other business trainings, other, other forums that we have, other trips that we have, uh, just to make sure that we try to disseminate these skills to us so that even as we conduct business, we are well supported and we have all the information that we need uh, to drive our businesses to the next level. And this one is done through our CopBank non-financial services program that is uh, you know, organized by the bank and is at the business banking department, just to make sure that we have um, you know, an engagement with our customers and we have you know, uh, getting feedback from our customers. And we are also trying to support you with all the skills that you require. Uh, in addition, uh, you'll note that we'll keep on encouraging you to be visiting our branches. We said, let's have a relationship manager or a business uh, branch manager who will also support you when it comes to financial solutions that you'll be looking forward to. Uh, this will include the asset finance uh, loans that you need, the business loans, the trade uh, facilitation and the financing, uh, the digital payment and collection solutions that you always look forward to. Uh, to make uh, payments and also to receive uh, payments. So uh, today we are here again to talk about adaptive and uh, authentic uh, leadership, uh, a very critical topic uh, because in business we are leaders and we are trying to lead and we are trying to look forward and see where we want to be in the future. And we are leading people, we are leading stakeholders and we are hoping that today we'll be able to get tips and insights that will help us to know how to go around that. We'll also have a bank representative come later to talk about a working capital solution that is very, very key for our business growth on stock financing. And, and, and uh, just to encourage the team and the participants who are here, please uh, get more information around it because it's one of the solutions that we feel will help you and will support you to go to the next level uh, in terms of business growth. So ours, again, is needed to welcome us uh, in this session, uh, participate, let us continue to engage. We have the Q&A tab, and we also have the chat section that we can use uh, to share uh, your feedback and the questions, and we try and answer most of the issues that, that you have. So many thanks for joining, and looking forward to having a very engaging session. Over back to you, Sam, to continue with the session. Good. As usual, I'm going to kindly ask us to appreciate Peter. Peter is working behind the scenes to make sure that these sessions happen. And 
I want to applaud you, Peter, because I know you've been, you've missed maybe only one because of a, another critical meeting that you had, but you don't have a shortage of critical meetings. And I know that you're always pushing people away to make sure you make it for this. So we really, really appreciate you for the work that you do with COP. Thank you very much. And lots of love coming through. I hope that you, uh, you're seeing that as well. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. All right. So that's a bit on the COP side. Um, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about AMI because this is a collaboration between um, COP Bank and AMI, and I'm part of the AMI family. So AMI is African Management Institute, in all about enabling ambitious businesses and entrepreneurs like yourselves across Africa to thrive. So wherever there's an opportunity like that, we are quick to jump onto and say, hey, how can we help? How can we partner? How can we know we are serving the SMEs that make Africa run? We've had quite a bit of reach. Some of the stats we are proud of, we've reached, we have reached in about 39 countries, about 42,000 people reached in terms of training. Uh, we use the digital platforms quite a bit, so content in five languages, lots of practical tools and online courses. That's something we're super proud of. Okay. Um, I think this is going for a few more days. If you'll be interested in the GYB program, there's full scholarships available. So this is for those of you who are here and you're thinking, I want to take the next step and move to the next level with my business. I'm not sure how I can do that. This is a training, this is a program that can help you do exactly that. There's, uh, it's If you're in Kenya, and of course you are, it's all virtual, so you don't have to be moving back and forth to face-to-face -face, face -face meetings. It will be in this kind of forum. So you can uh, maximize that. The link will be in the chat. Let me just double check that you've got that. Um, Fiona, I'm kindly requesting if you could post the link to the chat. Um, yeah, so just get that link and maximize the opportunity, all right? I hope that's uh, good. I'm just double checking. Yes, uh, Jane Mwikali, hi, how are you? Margaret, hi, how are you? Uh, Professor, okay, so very many people here. I'm, I'm not going to be able to say a quick hello to everyone, but I want to say a big welcome. Big, big, big welcome. All right, so let's jump in, okay? One, I want to ask you two questions, but I'm going to break them down before we get into our discussion about leadership and how we can maximize that or what that looks like in our different spaces. And before I tell you about our keynote speaker or other, it's going to be right, like an interview because we like to keep it a bit informal here. Good question. Over the last three years, share with me what top two, just two. I know there may be like five, but just two. Give me two two events or changes that have happened in the world at large. The two, what, what are your biggest ones that have just happened in the world over the last three years? Please type that out for me in the chat. Let's see. Catherine, good to see you. As soon as I see Redmi 10C, I know that's Catherine's phone. Kathy, good to see you here. Okay, please share with me if you just had the question or if you can see your screen. Yes. Princess Eguchi says COVID. So two events that you feel have been the greatest changes or events that have happened in the world in the last uh, three years. Let's see. Oh yes, Russia's invasion of Ukraine. That has been crazy. Yes. World Cup, yes. World Cup in Qatar, yes. Pauline, inflation, okay. Uh, Jane is citing lots of the disruption that has come from the digital era. Um, let me see. War in Russia, COVID Russia, COVID Russia, lots of COVID happening here. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, highlighting the droughts, uh, climate change, COVID. Uh, okay. Let's see. Here for her. Job, uh, COVID Russia, earthquake. Yes, the earthquake in Turkey. Fiona, thank you. Brexit. Okay. Jack Odero says change of business structures. Yes. Good, good. Drought in Kenya. Okay, good. So let me, what's interesting is that we've, some of us have been affected by the, the the recent, the strike situation that we're having. But it's funny, it's important. It's it's like happening, but it doesn't even sort of compare with the, all the things that you're putting in the list. And that's quite interesting, right? Okay, so let me move to my second question. My second question is a bit different. So share to two events, two events or changes that have happened in your life. So your life, whether it's business or personal or career, okay? Two key changes that have happened, that have happened in your life. Could be positive, could be negative, just kindly share, okay? 
demonstrations in the top African economies, okay? Yeah, we've had South Africa, all that, yes. Amos, for him, it's still the drought. Kindly note, I have changed the question to from the world. So the world at large is okay, big, the world. What's happening in South Africa? What's happening in Uganda? What's happening in East Africa, West Africa? All that. Now I want us to focus on here, okay? Top two events or changes that have happened in your life. Okay. Ah, someone has expanded their family. Well done. Well done. Uh, Francis says business sabotage by family. Ah, so sorry about that, sir. Um, and I, I want to say thank you so much for being very open with this because it's this is these are personal details. Maxwell started two businesses. Number two started stocks investment. Well done, Maxwell. Charles says changing my mindset. Okay, very good, very good. Uh, Christine's mom had a stroke. Oh, sorry about that. Um, Helen's sales have been really low. Nyaroche, my business expanded in height to heights I didn't expect. Well done. Congratulations to you. Catherine, residency in soldiering on. Okay, okay. I'm just going to read a couple more. Um, and I'm going to be, of course, I'm, I'm curious for, for what our guest speaker will be speaking towards these ones. Um, Oscar, starting my business, completing a study course. Well done. A boom says high cost of living. Yes, that's a crazy one. Um, Francis went back and started again. Now I'm okay. Very good. Um, let me see. So before we get into our keynote speaker, I'm just going to pick on one person. Francis, um, I'm, I'm going to ask uh, Fiona if you could kindly help me activate Francis's mic. Francis, I'd like to hear from you. You say you went back, you started again, and now you're okay. Francis, you are definitely a hero in these circles. And I want to hear from you. Okay. So, Francis, your mic. Uh, let's see where you are. Francis, I'd like you to tell us a little bit. Please unmute your mic and share with us a little bit, just a little bit about that journey. That sounds like a crazy journey. Some of us have been down the road, some of us are going to go down that road soon. Francis, kindly unmute your mic and share with us. Francis? Oh, sorry. There are three. Yes, there you go. Yes, sir. Mr. Agalomba. Yes, how are you? Very good. Tell us a little bit about that story. What happened? You went back to zero, then had to start again, but now you're okay. Tell us briefly what that was like. Yeah, you no, know, I was running a big industry. Uh, I operate a big bank. Yeah. I was running a big bank. Remember that just decided to my business by stealing my 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 income. So that's Francis, you sound like you're you're a bit far from your microphone. I'm not sure what device you may be using, maybe earphone or something. If you could get closer, we, we are struggling to hear you, sir. Okay. What I say, what, what I mean is this. one of my family members just decided to steal from my enterprise. Okay. Yeah. So I just managed to get some loans from a certain bank that helped me to pay all the debts. Now, certain bank, I'm clear the debt, and I'm still bank. Wow, wow. Well, thank, you. thank you so much, Francis, for sharing. We certainly appreciate you. Thank you very, very much. So Francis, um, I may have missed some of the detail, but what, is, uh, what, I, what I seem to have had is that he had the challenge with the business, something in the family dynamic, and then he had to, he has stuck with all this debt and he had to go to the bank, get loan facility, start all over again, and now he's putting the pieces back together. So well done, Francis. Please help me appreciate Francis. And of course, I'm appreciating Francis. <clears throat> I'm also appreciating everyone else who has been through all these different difficult situations and still made it through up until now. Okay, very good. So today we have the privilege of uh, hosting Joseph, uh, commonly known as Joe. So I will be referring to him as Joe, but not that's not to dishonor his uh, pedigree. He's a, he's a big man in these parts. This is Joseph Gashira, co-founder and executive director in Nuka Leadership Africa. Joe, if I'm not wrong, you guys made 10 years last year. 
So he's been running Inuka leadership for a decade. And now it's coming to a decade and a year, right? So I'm super excited about that. I'm super excited for you, Joe. Um, in that, in uh, I was also he's so Joe has this large history from finance and and uh, uh, let me see. I just wrote a couple of things down. So finance, tax uh, consulting, management consulting, and then I saw along the way you went into HR. And then all of a sudden, I see Inuka leadership, and you decide to change. So, okay. So, you're going to tell us a little bit about that adaptation. But I also know that uh, last year, I think it was last year, you, yeah, I think you spoke at uh, the Economic uh, Summit in South Africa. So, there's quite a, a number of stories that we'd like you to share with us. What were you sharing about in these tough times? But at the same time, this is the perfect timing for a person like you to come in because you're always running towards leadership and you're gearing people. You want to change this economy. You want to change Africa and you want to start with leaders. So tell me a little bit about some of the things I've mentioned, but also why this is so important to you, this lead piece and your desire to change Africa. Joe. Thank you, Sam. Uh, it's good to be here. Uh, and thank you for having me. Uh, the cooperative bank, uh, great stuff you guys are doing. Uh, and thank you for that nice introduction. Uh, I'm, I'm just here praying that my internet behaves. And, and so if you get some places where I am not audible, just kindly just uh, alert me. Yeah, but uh, okay. good to be here and good to see everyone. And as you rightly put it, Sam, uh, I have a background in accounting uh, and finance. So that's what I studied in school. Uh, and I've been a partner of an accounting and uh, auditing firm. But leadership development has always been uh, something that my heart beats for. Uh, it is John Maxwell that say that everything rises and falls on leadership. And so we could right. do everything else nicely and, 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 and put structures and come up with all these amazing businesses. But we, if we ignore that uh, soft fabric that is leadership, then uh, because it, it is these people that actually have the uh, capacity to be able to uh, make a business thrive or the opposite is also true. And so for me, I believe as much as we work on the hard skills, which is just uh, getting very good at what we do, understanding our industry and how it works, uh, then we also need to be very intentional about uh, creating the soft elements. And, and for me, that's leadership. And looking at the demographic of Kenya, the median age is 19. Uh, and it is say that 75% of Kenyans are below the age of 30. And so for me, I figured out, man, this, this is a huge uh, uh, populace that would then determine the trajectory of this country, <laughs> even organizations. I mean, look at even the CEOs of companies, and I'm sure most of entrepreneurs here are young entrepreneurs. And so for me, I said, we're going to focus our energies on raising the capacity or building capacity of these leaders and entrepreneurs, and especially those who fall below that you know, uh, age bracket of 35, uh, because these are guys who are going to belong uh, in the game. And so they have a longer uh, 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 space to impact, and we need to make sure that as they do that, they do it right. And so for me, that's a passion. I'm married uh, and I have three kids. Uh, I think that's just on our personal notes. Yes, so my life, my day looks like uh, I'm doing a lot of accounting on one end, then I'm also attending uh, uh, speaking engagements in universities, uh, in colleges, in workplaces. You mentioned that the economic summit in Africa. And so they were just looking for guys in Africa who are doing different things to empower the young people. And so I just selected from Kenya to go represent East Africa and speak about the youth and how we can use uh, uh, the, 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 the skill set we have and, and, and the energy uh, to influence change in the African continent. And so for me, that was a privilege, just being able to speak to heads of government, uh, you know, industry captains, and being able really to represent the agenda of the young people uh, at that African yeah. continent uh, stage. We yeah. Are, we, we, <laughs> we are definitely... So we are definitely appreciating you here. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Very good. Uh, yeah. You, you send me that uh, relations uh, sound bite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, we, no, it's 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 just amazing to see because there's a lot of activity happening, like in Kenya for you. In Kenya, you're pushing all like speaking engagements after speaking engagements, and then South Africa, and then even this Saturday you have a speaking engagement. I think it's going to be at uh, uh, it's it's the Lake Academy. It's uh, they're doing yeah, an yeah. event on entrepreneurial leadership, at Sitam Valley Road, right? Right. 
Could you, could you just mention a bit about that and then we'll jump into the, the topic today? Yeah, so this is uh, the, the, the leadership, uh, LEC uh, stands for Leadership, Entrepreneurship and Career Development Academy. And so that's, you know, again, in line with what we're trying to do with young people, just bringing together young people and seeing how can we build their leadership capacity, their entrepreneurial capacity, and, uh, you know, just their career development journeys. Uh, and so what we're doing, we bring different leaders to be able to mentor these guys, to coach them, to talk to them uh, at a very small fee. So uh, if you're available, we'll be having a session this Saturday at uh, Sitam Valley Road. And it's really just being able to sit under uh, the feet of guys who've gone ahead of us to say that if you want to see far, then you need to stand on the shoulders of, 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 of giants. And so it's an open invite. Uh, I think I'm just going to circulate the poster to you after this, then you can share with the members. Yeah, but guys are welcome to attend and to learn alongside us. Good. Okay, so let's take a sharp turn and jump to today. Uh, what's your comment? People commented... Uh, Big events that have happened in the world, just the top ones, COVID, uh, the Russia invasion, oil prices, inflation, you know, all these different things. And then in personal, so there's a lot of change on the world scene, but also lots of change in the personal. How, mm. you know, what's your comment when you read all that, the submissions that everyone put in there? Yeah, Sam, I think uh, one thing we have to acknowledge and uh, really face as leaders is that we are living in a world which is very unpredictable. Um, you know, there is imperfect information, market information to mean that uh, sometimes you're meant to make decisions with not, without enough uh, uh, knowledge. Information, yeah. There's a series of multiple unknowns, uh, you know, and, and, and even the, now the need to be able to respond quickly uh, when things happen uh, is something that none of us can be able to escape. And as we do this, uh, you know, I like the, the, you know, some of the things people are sharing about what's happening. And, and, and I couldn't help but notice that, you know, some of them are internal, some are external. So as we face this unpredictability and figure out what to do, we must also recognize that it is not working, uh, uh, you know, in and by itself. You know, it is working within a context where you're talking about multidimensional, um, socioeconomic, cultural, political issues that are going, uh, you know, around us. I mean, you talked about the strikes that I am now made to understand will be happening every Monday and Thursday, and I pray it is not the same, uh, the case. Yeah. But you can imagine what that does uh, to all businesses which operate within those volatile areas, eh? and what that means for you. I mean, uh, the deputy president did quote a figure of how much we lost on Monday, uh, businesses yeah. lost on Monday uh, on account of that uh, particular demonstration. And for me, I'm like, you know, that, that environment you're living in and we cannot wish it away is something that we must, we cannot wish it away. We must as leaders yeah. begin to build a capacity to be able to say, uh, how do we still drive uh, through this? Uh, and I like what you called it, the VUCA. Uh, it, it, it's something we talk about a lot in the leadership circles. Uh, and, and VUCA really stands for volatile. When you check the dictionary uh, meaning for volatile, it says something change, changing very rapidly and for the bad. So it's not changing for the good, it's changing for the worst. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And unpredictable. You don't know what will happen tomorrow. And uh, when you speak about an, an unpredictability, especially in the context of uh, small businesses in Kenya, we've seen a lot of the tax regime is very volatile for lack of a better word. Eh? Things are changing every day. New taxes yeah. are being introduced, others being removed. And so if you had planned something uh, without considering uh, the unpredictable nature, for instance, of the tax regime in Kenya, then you're caught flat-footed. Uh, so that's VUC stands for complex. Sometimes, again, I, I'll talk about a lot about tax because that's my area. People say these taxes, especially entrepreneurs, we, are, we don't understand taxes at all. And maybe I hope one, one of these days you can organize a session on taxes to demystify taxes. And I've done a, a couple of uh, uh, videos online. You can go check just Jogashir on YouTube just to demystify and say, tax, I call them tax simplified. How do you understand as an entrepreneur that taxes is not, because when you hear KRA, most of us just know this is a crazy thing. But how do you make yeah. it, you know, understand it and actually Practical. make it work for you because you can make a tax work for you. So that complexity and then ambiguous. So we are all living in a, a VUCA kind of environment. Uh, yeah. And again, it is a Greek philosopher, Heraclitus, who said change is the only constant in life. Uh, and yeah. so for us, we must know that life will, will always throw to us curveballs as entrepreneurs and we need to be ready. Uh, to, to yeah. tackle them when they come. So I think uh, this conversation today is quite timely, especially because just from all the examples, and I was writing some here, 
uh, clearly from an external you know point of view and even internal i had guys say like christine you said your mom suffered from stroke i'm so sorry about that those are internal things you don't plan for but they just come to you uh, and you don't know how to handle them but you must really begin to build capacity uh, to handle such things when they come very good very good All right so let's jump into today's topic um it's adaptive leadership adaptive and authentic leadership first of all okay so what does that mean to some of us Sam, um, Sam, I'm losing you a bit. I don't know if it's my end or yours. Um, can you hear me now? Yes, loud and clear. Okay. Okay, good. I'll just rephrase the question. So let's just introduce us to this subject: adaptive leadership and authentic leadership. What does that mean? And and how like just introduce that, please, for us. Okay, so when you when you talk about um, adaptive leadership, it's really a framework that helps uh, individuals, both individuals and organizations, to be able to adapt to you know and still thrive. So number one is adapt and thrive in challenging environments. Uh, and 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 I think I've really defined well what a challenging environment would look like. And so this is really talking about how do I really become agile as a leader? Uh, how do I uh, adopt current approaches even in the face of these challenges? And so when you think about adapt, adaptive leadership, it is really leadership that allows you to diagnose, uh, to interrupt, to innovate. You know, innovation is actually a big part of adaptive leadership. Uh, and in short, just to build capacity uh, to solve complex problems. So that's what adaptive leadership is. And as you can see, you know, this is not a reserve of a few. It really must be all of us. And now when you talk about authentic leadership is when you're just transparent and true to your values. Uh, one of the things we say in leadership is that every leader must be seen to have a moral value compass. Uh, uh, if you've read our book by Simon Sinek called uh, Start With Why, why? Really talks about yeah. that, uh, yes, an amazing book I would recommend for entrepreneurs here. It really talks about authentic leadership and that people actually follow you not because you will pay them a salary. Yeah, yeah. I've had stories of people who left a job because and they had a big salary or people had, you know, stopped doing a certain business because uh, you know, as much as it had good money, because it didn't align, align with a bigger why. So for us, uh, when we talk about authentic leadership is saying, you know, what is grounding us? What is that bigger why? What are the values and the compass that really guides us uh, as we do our business? And so these things uh, are intermarried in, in that your authentic leadership uh, uh, focus then would, would really speak a lot to how you adapt and how you engage adaptive leadership when uh, time calls for that. Yeah. Now, now, for the context of the, the SMEs, all of us here, SMEs, what does that mean, especially when it comes to strategy and planning? With all the change that's happening in hearing, I need to be adaptive, authentic. I'm still stuck at planning. What, what do we do? Mm, nice. So uh, that's a good question, Sam. Eh? And what, when you think about uh, adaptive leadership and now its application on the ground, uh, I, I would really yeah. summarize v2, it to like, like they say, V2 to ground. <laughs> ground is different. <laughs> yeah. So we need, how do we, I want, so what, what I'm, I should just preface that. I want us to be like extremely practical and, and because everyone who comes for these sessions knows that these sessions are very practical. And by the time, of course, we invited you, we know that you're the person who's just going to help us. Okay. This is a tip. This is something that we can do. Oh, this is what it looks like, so that we can start seeing where the wisdom can apply immediately, even after this session. So, how does it? What does it look like for the SME? Absolutely. Absolutely. So maybe what what I can do first, Sam, is to give like some building blocks for uh, adaptive leadership, and then maybe I can share some very practical tips that you know that entrepreneurs can begin to action even right now. Yeah? So when you okay, think good, about adaptive good. leadership, you can break it down into like four main blocks. Eh? And one of it is anticipation. So as an entrepreneur, as a leader, one of the things you must always be doing is anticipating. And anticipation in this case is asking yourself, what are the likely future needs of my customers? You know, how are they likely to change? How are their taste preferences likely to change in the next few weeks, in the next few months? And of course, this is influenced a lot by uh, the change in world media and you must really figure it out in your own context uh what are the future likely needs what are the trends and how they are changing what are the options that guys are having because if guys have options then they will definitely go for uh your competitor so that's anticipation number two is articulation um 
how are you able to build a collective understanding, especially within your team? Uh, now, the thing that you know really interests me. So I, 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 I faced some 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 not very good service from from a company the other day, and I, I was like, no, this the way I know the CEO and the culture they are trying to build. Incidentally, the, the person didn't know I know the CEO, and so I placed a, a call to the CEO. Uh, and what he's told me is that for sure this is not the culture we are trying to build and we are so sorry. But what was really apparent is that you could be trying to build something up here, but when it trickles down, and especially for banks, I know the, the customer facing people are the people at the, at the desks, at the counters. Right. Yeah? So maybe yeah. you have these big strategies, but if that doesn't really trickle down to the person who is customer facing, then they would be saying cooperative bank AMI is a bad bank. And you see all these things on Twitter yeah. every day. And not right. because you have not worked on internet, but because of this person who is actually customer facing. And so that there's a need to articulate very clearly. So there's a collective understanding within the team that this is the direction we are taking and this is what we need to do. Then of course, there's uh, the, four, the that day, which is adapt adaptation. Uh, again, when you talk about adaptive leadership, Sam, you cannot divorce it from a, a personal development, continuous learning. And I like that you're able to facilitate continuous learning through these uh, sessions. Uh, in fact, I think it's a good place to mention that my wife did uh, this program with AMI like a year ago, and I've seen the transformation in her business. You know, oh, really? and so these are, yeah, absolutely. Maybe I'll say buy you after this. Uh, but this just element of continuous learning uh, and seeing how do we adjust uh, as necessary as uh, you know the challenges come. I think that's very important. And then also, also there's the issue of accountability. You know, and this now ties into the uh, authentic leadership we are talking about. How do we ensure that there is maximum transparency in decision making processes? You know, there's just openness and a, and, and, and a culture of open communication throughout your entrepreneur organization, uh, both internally and externally. So I think those are excellent building blocks uh, that entrepreneurs could be, could, could, could be able to adopt. So I don't know if I just go quickly ahead and give a, you know, a couple of tips to entrepreneurs on yeah. how to, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, after, yeah, absolutely. So. I, yeah. So, so I'm now, sorry, I'm so I feel like I'm in class right now. So I have a big pen here, and I am scribbling <laughs> away my serious notes. I need to remember that I'm hosting. So okay, so just give me two seconds, ladies and gentlemen. If you are listening, if you're watching, good to have you here. We are having a conversation with Joe Gashira, who is talking about adaptability and authenticity in our leadership. We live in a VUCA world. It's crazy, things are topsy-turvy, everything is upside down, from changes such as COVID to elections, to we are in the middle of strikes right now. What does the future look like? We can't stand and wait. We are the leaders for the hour, so we need to do something about it, and we need to adapt. So that's the conversation we're having. We've just listened to Joe, and we're talking about four key things that is, is throwing our way in terms of adaptive leadership. Uh, in anticipation, we need to anticipate, we need to articulate, we need to adapt, and we need accountability. Now we're going into the very practical. Who's doing this well? What are the top uh, top tips that we can do? All right, I'm handing back over to you. I'm getting back to my big pen here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sam. So some quick tips. Uh, and, and for me, uh, I'm also a, a trainer and a teacher. And for me, if we can't get things that we will go in action, then there is no learning. And we are talking about learning being a big aspect. So you can just measure yourself against some of these things. And actually, these are things I will share with you from my own experience. Uh, I run a couple of businesses uh, in the in the media industry, in the organics industry, um, in the you know uh, environmental sustainability industry, and so for me, it's just years also of experience and 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 some of the things that I've seen to work uh, for me even as I run these businesses. And so, number one thing you need to do is uh, invest in a coach. Um, and a coach is, a, and I know these things sound a bit foreign for African leaders and especially Kenyan leaders, because I mean, why would I pay money for somebody to coach me? And what we need to understand is that coaches actually are not teachers. These are not guys coming to give you um, uh, ideas or tell you how to do your business. They just help you mine what is already within you. So these are guys who are really helping you uncover growth areas and to structure your thinking. You know, I personally have a several coaches who every time I meet, they are helping me organize my thinking toward, towards a productive end. And I think that's something uh, you need and every entrepreneur needs. 
So that is one thing that you can actually uptake immediately, you know, and it doesn't have to be even some somebody you pay. It's just you walking to Sam and saying, hey, Sam, I, I think you're very good at this. Could you be meeting me? I could buy you coffee once every two months and we could, you know, you could help me think strategy. How do we strategize for this business? ETC, ETC. Number two is really a very basic thing. Act like an entrepreneur. You know, when I was doing my studies in entrepreneurship, uh, you know, you, you're made to go through characteristics of an entrepreneurship and you're told, you know, what, what, what is entrepreneurship attitude? Um, and, and the long and short of it is that all of us started business because we want to make money. And making money involves cutting <laughs> costs, you know, improve, improving productivity, you know, things revenue, like revenue, <laughs> performance, <laughs> I know, yeah. bottom but line. Most of us, I know that's the bottom line, but most of us sometimes want to act like we are not entrepreneurs <laughs> and we want to be, you know, to pacify everyone and everything. No. So I just say, pick your act up and act like an entrepreneur, you know, because you're not expecting a paycheck at the end of the month. You're not employed. And so please remember why you started and what is the end game and begin to work like an entrepreneur you are today. Of course, number three is knowing your customer. I think I spoke to that uh, a bit earlier. So know your customer needs. Uh, I, I think there's somebody here who talked about uh, uh, makeover. They, they do uh, something to do with makeover of houses. You know, what do they need? What kind of trends are there when it comes to uh, house makeovers? Uh, what, what, what kind of new deco items are there? You know, there was this China Square thing that they brought uh, uh, cheap things that are better quality than us. How can I make sure that I'm beating them to their game uh, and improving the quality yeah. of uh, the provision of uh, services I'm giving to my customer in terms of reliability, in terms of quality, in terms of cost? So the person who can best know your customer is you, and you must actually invest your, li your life to, be, to being able to do that. Um, the other one is, uh, I, I think I, I, I can quickly speak to this, Sam. Uh, there's a book called uh, uh, by Kiyosaki, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Eh? It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's another good book. Eh? And he talks about oh, the Kiyosaki. cash flow. Yeah, he talks about cash flow quadrant. Eh? So he says, if you're, you're either one of these four things, you're an employee, so we all know what an employee is. You, you, you have a job uh, you know, at AMI, ETC. You can either be a business owner. So a business owner is somebody who actually owns a business, but has put together systems so, so that the business can run on its own. So if you can't go for a holiday and leave your business for two days, uh, you're not yeah, a that's business not a owner. That's another job. <laughs> yeah, it's called self-employed. You're self-employed. <laughs> you're self-employed. Okay. You're not a business owner. You know. Yeah. So that's the third one. And of course, you can also be an investor. You, you're not involved in the day-to-day. So, -day. so day -day. Joe, let me, let, me, let me pull you back up. So if you've created, unless you've created systems where the business can make money while you're away, yes. you are, you, that's just another job or the, you're self-employed. That's not entrepreneurship yet. There's no difference between you and somebody who wakes up to go to work five to uh, five, uh, eight to five. Uh, yeah. But 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 you you please yourself and telling yourself that uh, you're a business owner. You're not. You're self-employed. So the and, and, and I, so the goal yeah. the goal the goal with all that I'm just bringing it back to the focus. The goal with all the change that we are trying to maneuver is you, we need to set up systems and and processes which serve us even as, and that will be very useful in handling and adapting to the change that's around us. Right. Absolutely. And so that is okay. that should be the goal of every one of us here. How do we move from being a self self-employed to business owners and that is through systems and that is one of the things you're talking about uh, of being an adaptive leader and also actually just bringing the right people around you so your hiring must be very point on you can't afford to and we don't have a runway of many of a lot of capital as small entrepreneurs and so how do you bring in the right people to be able to support these uh, systems that you're putting in place um you know i've talked about predicting the future uh and being able to just figure out uh where is the world going and how can we align? So a good example, Sam, would be the example of Nokia. And this is an example that is given a lot. You know, Nokia refused to be adaptive. Uh, the, you know, the, the, the world was headed the, uh, the, the Android way, but then they, they, they decided to be adamant. And you can be able to see what that did. Eh? So they were not ready for a big challenge in the mobile industry. And from Nokia being the biggest mobile brand, you can see what happened. And they're just trying now to uh, recoup themselves. And so 
you don't want to be the story of Nokia. So you need to predict and begin to prepare for the future, even as you co continue working on the present. Eh? Uh, we've talked about watching your competition. Uh, the best way, and I think even in business plans, there's always a section of competitors because you always need to know what the competition is doing. There's a lot of learning uh, that you can actually get even from your competitors. Uh, last but not least, I think is the whole place of continuous learning as we've spoken. So what courses do you need to start doing? Small courses to begin to make yourself uh, more effective and um, you know, more skillful in whatever it is, whatever work you're doing. Um, and, and mind you, skills are becoming very obsolete very quickly nowadays. So you must keep oh, yeah. reinventing yourself uh, and making sure you're at the best of your game. Sam. Um, I, a, you said Nokia, then you jumped off. I realize um, of a certain age, like you said, uh, you could also find that some people may not be familiar with this story. You know, like we remember uh, and we are like, what happened to Nokia? And we don't know. But I think to contextualize it a bit in terms of change, Nokia had the highest uh, percentage of market share when it came to, to mobile phones and digital technology. And at some point, they just stayed there and they just stayed at the top. And they did nothing to make sure that they are paddling forward. So because they didn't mm -hmm. embrace change, other players came and took over. So, but I want you to now, you're a facilitator trainer, so I'm in good company because I am a trainer myself. So what does that mm -hmm. mean exactly for lessons? Because that could also, how does that refer to advantages we may have now? Like you may not be feeling the pressure of change now, and you're at a certain point in your business. How do you make sure you don't get comfortable so that you can be ahead of the curve? Sorry, Sam, come again. As um, Nokia, so Nokia had this huge advantage, how do we make mm -hmm. sure that we maximize the advantages we may have? Or, and that may be market share, that could be the talent that we have, that could be the idea that we have. How do we make sure we stay ahead of the curve so that we don't uh, end up like Nokia? Yeah, absolutely. I think it goes back to what we're talking about here, which is um, uh, learning and innovation. And these things go... Uh, hand in hand. There's a guy, I, I think he's called uh, William Pollard, who said that the arrogance of success is actually thinking that what you did yesterday will be sufficient for tomorrow. Uh, and so is this to say, man, uh, we cannot, uh, and I had another person say some, some, some time, these guys who keep giving you past successes, we, you know, me, I got a name, KCSC. That doesn't matter now when you're talking about growing our businesses today. And so we cannot be those people who celebrate past successes and keep using uh, past methods. What happened in 1995? 1995, <laughs> class of 95, and you're still preaching to us. No, like, no, one, cares. Cares. no yeah, one cares. No one really cares. Let's move. <laughs> no one cares. So for us, it's to really think, uh, and when we talk about innovation, it involves <laughs> continuous learning. You know, and taking that disposition of like, hey, the thing that worked tomorrow, might, yesterday might not work tomorrow. Uh, and so it, it must be that we are willing as entrepreneurs to disrupt ourselves and say, okay. how do we make ourselves uncomfortable uh, so that we can win the market here that has not even uh, <laughs> come to our, our advantage today. And part of this really is uh, allowing yourself, you know, to, to, to accept ideas and input. And that is why we keep talking about the team. The team is very important. Is realizing that actually you might have been the one who started this organization, but you might also be the one who kills it. And so it is saying, <laughs> I don't want to be that person. How do I allow people who actually give me very good ideas, very good input in, in terms of partners? And I think that's a conversation we can have another day. What does partnership when it comes to small businesses look like? Uh, these are people who give you constructive feedback. Uh, you know, and of course, knowing that uh, there's an idea my, one of my coaches keeps telling me, eh? uh, you need to test cheaply and quickly, cheaply and quickly. You know, allow for trial and error, okay. cheaply and quickly. Cheaply is to mean it doesn't cost you a lot of time, uh, uh, you know, a lot of money. Quickly doesn't cost you a lot yeah. of time. So you must keep asking yourself okay. what's there, you know, expose yourself to what other people are doing even outside the, the you know, the country and begin to, you know, uh, uh, kind of test that within your market. But make sure that you're not, uh, because again, we don't have a lot, a lot of capital to be able to burn on that. How do you test cheaply right. and quickly? Yeah, so I think that would be, okay. yeah. Okay. Um, first of all, you're giving us too much. It's, you know, like you ask for a glass of water and then someone gives you a horse and it's just, 
you know, pouring all this inspiration and information and and there's lots of uh, comments that are coming in the in the in the in the chatting great stuff um two weeks ago i know we have uh, so again i'm paying my attention to everyone in the room here we have about maybe five more minutes of this discussion or maybe maybe three more minutes of this discussion uh landing some some of the ideas that uh, joe has brought, just brought to us if you have a question put it in the chat if you have a scenario that you want to play out to joe please go ahead and do that and uh, and I will be able to you know present it, and then we can talk through about it. Two weeks ago, Joe, you posted. I think it was on your LinkedIn. You you posted something about generations, okay? Gen Z, you know all these like how do they play out different scenarios? And, and now you just mentioned teams because in being adaptive, you can't be adaptive without your team because you may be the the the, the weakest link. Just because you started the business, like you said, doesn't mean you're the one going to take you to the next level. The newest yeah. person you hired may be the next person to, to kind of give you the next idea. But how yeah. does that factor in? How do you understand generations and how to deal with them? If you could comment, whatever you can do, Gen Z, X, millennials, why, how does that work? Yo, man, that's 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 a very interesting- uh, no, it's, a, it's a tall order. Bit. It, man, it's that's a that's a that's a whole animal because it, for the first time it has been found that um, in the workplace there are like five generations. Can you imagine? There are five generations in the workplace, and the motivations of these guys are different. Um, the goals are different. Uh, and and to give you an example, maybe somebody who is now in the somebody who's a millennial, for instance, uh, these guys uh, don't want to be. Uh, for, they don't want to be told come to the office eight to five. You know, they're just like, what are the key? What do you want? What do you, what do you want done? I'll send it what to you. What do you want done? Uh, then they're like, okay, leave that to me. Uh, yeah. Let let me but, figure it out. When do you want it done? Okay, when, leave me alone. I I'll exactly. send you an email. Now, the, the, your maybe the boss is somebody who is uh, from the Gen uh, Gen X. And then they, they need to see you at your desk. They need to see you at your desk. <laughs> yeah. Regardless hey, of whether you're you or not. Eh? And so you find that there is a lot of clashes and even the motivations. I mean, for the Gen X, their motivations used to be give me a corner office uh, or give me a title. Mm -hmm. Just call me general manager. You know, and, right. and that one, you know. And, and for these other guys, they're like, I don't care about titles. The, gen, just... the, 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 the millennials. Uh, they're like, yeah. I don't care about titles. Just give me a good salary, you know. Yes. And now there's the advent of all these stories about mental health. Just give me mental health breaks. Have well a full cool in the office. Yeah. Uh, Process to study. Exactly. Opportunities to lead. Opportunities, yeah. you know. And now for the first time, there's a need to really harmonize and see how do all these uh, uh, different generations work together. And I think, uh, Sam, this would be a very interesting uh, topic to actually dive in and actually go into details and look at uh, the semantics of that and how and a lot of research has been done on how the different uh, um, generations can actually integrate to make sure that there is productivity at the workplace because the opposite is true these guys will lock heads and at the end of the day uh, there will be no productivity and now yeah. it makes it worse when uh, a young person is uh, uh, supervising an older but you're supervising somebody the age of your parent uh, how does that look like in terms of communication demeanor and still maintaining the fact that we're here to work uh, regardless of our age. So yeah, those are very interesting conversations. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for highlighting that. Um, let me just see. I wanted you to touch on, um, yes, you've done, I think, no, I, I'm fine, I'm fine. I have a, there's a tall list, there's a, uh, it's an endless conversation that we can have, but I want to just mention some things that are being put in the, in the chat. Uh, Felix says, very relatable. Thank you, Joe, for doing that. Uh, Christine is inspired. Christine Ogutu, Akish is inspired. Pauline says, great session. I'm learning a lot. Hey, guys, if you have a question, if you have a submission, just put it in the chat. I'll read it out. And then in about in a few, in three or four minutes, I'll have to release Mr. Joe Kashira because he has a busy day as well. Most companies, to Edwin says, most companies are starting to for the first time. To be honest, I'm inspired. Ah, Edwin, welcome, welcome, welcome. Princess Eguchi says, fantastic presentation, very good insights. Thank you very much, Joe. Okay. And then Christine said, be like, be like Safaricom. I'm not sure what she was referring to, but 
<laughs> actually, actually, let me comment on that, eh, Sam. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. When talk yeah, about, in fact, uh, Safaricom has actually received an award for being the most adaptive um, organization around. Yeah. And when you look at some of the things they've been able to do, like they launched something called Alpha in 2017. And this is purely an innovation yeah. hub. And they told the employees, if you have an idea, if you have something that you think uh, can be able to come in and, 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 and enhance the quality of, of, of service provision to our mm -hmm. customers. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and they said, we're gonna give funding to you guys to build platforms, products and services within. You know, so they created like various verticals within the organization and said, hey, if you're interested in health, uh, education, agriculture payments, just come and you're able to accommodate that. And so uh, I agree with that comment that Safaricom is actually one of the companies that you can research about uh, when it comes to just adaptive leadership and uh, authentic leadership. And there are other organizations like I know one called, uh, maybe because of time I just mentioned one, Copia. I know you've seen ah, Copia. Yes, the yellow, the, yeah. Yeah, you know, yellow and red, yeah. place, and maybe you're wondering what that has been. And so these guys have actually used the uh, adaptive approaches. They said, okay, uh, you know, you can ask for Uber Eats in Nairobi and your meal is delivered or you can order from Kafu. But who is actually taking care of these guys in the in the, in the the Mashinani areas? And so for them, their vision was just simple. How do we allow the Kenyan unbanked people? So these guys don't have accounts. Uh, they are unconnected. They have Kabambes. How do we enable them to participate in the e-commerce? Uh, and, and so the vision was very simple. How do we bring online shopping to rural Kenyans uh, who have difficulty accessing shopping sites? And you can see how innovative that is, that actually a person yeah. in Shacks can be able to- And the market. Yes, and access the market. So for me, Safaricom and Copia really stand out as excellent um, um, companies of, of which have been able to actually adapt and, and have been very successful at it. Yeah, so sort of a, a blue strategy approach altogether, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. let me see. Um, um, Maxwell says, speaking of generations and adaptiveness, is it true? So, um, Joe, you and I have no quick answers. So I'm going to challenge you to give me like sound bites and then we'll move. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's not so my Max, strength, but. <laughs> my, um, yeah, you have to be adaptive, man. We are going to test uh, yeah, your absolutely. Theory. So, Maxwell is saying, speaking of generations and adaptiveness, is it true that physical workspaces are being slowly replaced by cloud? Comment. Yeah, so the quick answer to that is yes and no, because at the end of the day, there are some jobs that can't be done uh, offline. But by and large, in the coming years, I think 70% of the workplace would be would actually be happening online and on the cloud. But if you think about factory setting and there has to be somebody putting in the inputs and somebody supervising yeah. the outputs, which maybe cannot be handled by machine, uh, then uh, so yes, that would be the case, but not entirely, maybe 70-30%. Okay, good. But the adaptive mindset around that is to learn how to work cloud. That's what to keep thinking. What's the adaptive mindset, right? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Uh, Francis, quick question. Um, Francis, Francis is asking, how do you determine remuneration salary for employees who are employing for the first time? Yes. I'm not, um, maybe you can answer both as well. Yeah. Yeah, very quickly. So the government has offered the uh, directives on this in terms of the minimum uh, uh, wage for every kind of space. But that notwithstanding, if you want to do over and above, then I think you could engage a HR consultant to be able to help you organize like pay skills. Eh? And of course, this would be largely guided by your bottom line and your projections, as long as it fits within the minimum. Uh, the problem now would be you're paying somebody something. Illegal. Yeah, below the legal uh, provision of the government. Yeah, so I think, uh, yeah, that, that would be an answer to that. Okay, uh, okay. I'm also just reading through the questions, yeah. Reading through. Most are just uh, great, 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 great. Um, okay, um, you know what, okay. let's yeah. let's do this. Um, it sounds like there's a lot of information and inspiration that we're getting. I'm an SME, I'm in the room, my first time, my second time, or maybe my 10th time. Joe, I'm listening to you. I'm so busy working on my business. I don't know where you get these insights about adaptability and what's happening in the world. What's the discipline around that? Like, how can I balance my tech? Because we, we have businesses to run, man. Yeah. How do I make a plan so that I, I stay in touch with what's happening in the world and the future? That's a very good question. And I'll answer it with an analogy. Yeah? If, if you are taking a road trip, road trip and... Uh, you discovered that uh, you're running low on fuel. And you said, 
I don't have time to fool. And you actually pass a shell petrol station and said, I'm going to get late. So I don't have time to fool. Let me keep going. What's bound to happen? Uh, uh, the car at some point. And unfortunately, it might stall at a place where there is no even petrol station. And so for me, right. is to say as entrepreneurs, we must be really intentional to take intentional breaks of number one, refreshing ourselves, number one, learning, and number one, and number, number three, filling our cups. Because if you run empty, then you'll be of no value to anyone uh, very shortly. And so for us is to really, and I mentioned about coaching, I meet my coaches every so often, you know, because they give me insight, they help me mine the information within, but also make sure that you're connected out there. Every day, if you can have some time to uh, go through your feed and see what's happening in your area. Uh, if you can get into the discipline of reading and especially reading about things that concern your, your kind of business, um, you, you, you'd know what's happening. Like for instance, you've heard of the hulabalu around the Mitumba uh, yeah. uh, business and, and the taxes being levied around that. You'd better be 10 steps ahead of government so that by the time that one is coming, you already know how to pivot uh, effectively because you're 10 steps ahead. But if you're the one who he has, imagine you're in a business and you're hearing from other people. By the way, I had me too, but you're like, what do you mean? Where? How? Who said that? <laughs> that cannot be you. So you really need to invest time to understand the semantics and the ins and outs that concern your business. Okay. So if I, if I do correctly, there are two things that are really standing out for us. In, in order for us to be adaptive, mm -hmm. we have to think in terms of knowledge and skills. Absolutely. Where is the knowledge? Where is the knowledge gap? Where is the skill gap? Break it down. What do I need to find out about? What do I need to pick up that positions me better for the future and make a plan for that. Yes. Well done. You've you've put in a sentence what I uh, see. My 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 big pen. I'm trying. I'm trying. So okay. So <laughs> so la the last thing I'm going to do then I have to release our guest, ladies and gentlemen, is. Man, you sound like you're super well-read. Uh, all this information, are there podcasts that you're listening to? Are there books that we need? We've already mentioned some books. Um, how can we follow you? That kind of thing. Like We want to stay in touch because it sounds like there's a lot happening and we need to stay plugged in. Yeah, definitely. I think I've, I've mentioned a couple of books, but I can do a comprehensive list of uh, resources uh, in the interest of time. But I'm Joe yeah. Gashira on all platforms. So you find me on LinkedIn, on Instagram, on Twitter uh every other platform i think we can connect more there and uh, yeah. i could be able to address specific issues that you might uh have uh but just to say thank you i see all your good comments uh it's interesting there are people who are also part of this program that are known to me i've seen like two so that's also <laughs> very interesting <laughs> and yes, nice to yes. see you yeah so let's connect on those platforms thank you yeah uh, sam has been able to screen that yeah so joe gashira on uh, all platforms you'll be able, and that's my email there as well that's my number. Just don't call me at night. Don't be weird. <laughs> don't be weird. <laughs> don't be weird. Uh, otherwise, we'll have to be adaptable, and that will not be good for you. <laughs> okay. Yes. Good. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Please give 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 a big thank you to, to Joe Gashira for being with us today. Co-founder, executive director, Inuka Leadership Africa. He's trying to change Africa, especially everyone who is 35 and below, because that's the next generation of our leaders. And we need someone mentoring and coaching and guiding them. And we have people like Joe Gashira. Joe, people like you give Africa hope. So we thank you so much for the work that you're doing. And thank you for being here, for inspiring us, even giving us some directions on how to adapt and be authentic in our leadership. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Sam, and your team, uh, the COP team. And thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. I'll, I'll allow you to, to drop off. Please uh, reach out to Joe. It's uh, LinkedIn and all these platforms. He's there. Um, there for you. All right. Very good. Um, so we are at the time where I'd like to make a quick turn and just hear from our friends at Copa. So I'm going to turn over to, Ms. I think, Mr. Kiprop. But while Mr. Kiprop comes on, I will let you know, I'm going to share at the end of this, uh, in the next maybe 10 or 15 minutes, I'm going to share with you how you can access. So some of you are waiting for, uh, uh, thinking of this recording, you want to access this recording. You don't have to wait for someone to send anything to you. I'm going to show you how you can do it yourself. It's really simple. It's a three-step uh, uh, process. I'll show you visually how you can access these recordings yourself. So don't worry about that. In a short while, I'll do that. For now, I want to invite uh, Mr. Kiprop, I believe. Just give me a second. Let me confirm that. And as Mr. Kiprop settles in, I'll just read a few uh, submissions here. Oh, yes. Lots of thank yous to 
to Joe and appreciation for the session. Mr. Kipro, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and hand over to you. Thank you, thank you. Now, uh, good morning, team. Uh, this is Kenneth Kiprop from the trade finance team from Cooperative Bank. Uh, today, I just want to engage you on um, some of the initiatives we have for the MSMEs. So I think uh, that will be the task that we have this month. This, in fact, we have. Uh, let me look at the time. Just to have. Sorry, we have crossed over to, into the afternoon. So um, without further much ado, I think I just go through the short presentation and then uh, I should be able to take questions from the floor, especially uh, maybe what, what may not be clear. So we have a product called Stock Finance. Maybe we can go to the next page. So um, for the traders on the call, I know the previous speaker has really given us a synopsis of how the market is has told us about how we're supposed to manage HR recruitment in terms of how we balance our books, in terms of how we want to be innovative on what we do. And uh, to do that, I believe you need to have a strong financial partner. CoBank is, is in the market now for since, since uh, the 1960s. We have around 189 branches and we are actually uh, the number one MSME bank in the country. So it means that if you're an SME and you want to grow, you want to be able to get the right services, you want to be able to get the right products, then actually CoBank is the bank for you. So if we look at stock financing, we are saying that uh, Kenya, we are not, um, a man Kenya is a trading economy. Um, 80 to 90% of our people are involved in day-to-day -day trade in terms of uh, buying and selling. So when you look at stock financing, we look at five major sectors that cover around 80% of our trade. So when, when you look at building and construction, most of you have heard about the affordable housing that is ongoing. We have had a lot of building of roads for the last uh, five or six years. We're also seeing the um, people act actually doing a lot of building in the country. In this case, they will need things like cement, paint, mabati, nails, timber, sand, ballast. And I know some of you as traders here, you're actually involved in the day-to-day -day trade of these commodities. So we have a package for you that uh, fits into the cash conversion cycle of your business. So for cement, we have an offering with Bamburi that is 0.3% per week. But also for general hardware, we have also an offering that is 0.5 per week flat. So it means if I'm bringing an invoice of 1 million, the bank is only going to charge me 5,000 shillings. So for those now longer term trade, because remember, if you're dealing with building and construction materials, there are some that move very fast, like cement and mabati, but there, are, but there are also others that take longer to move, like timber, nails, pipes, buckets, and ballast. So we have a package where we do 2.5% one-off appraisal fee. Then for every drawdown, we charge 1.25% commission. So it means if, if, if you're coming to Core Bank and you're coming to our branch and say, I'm a... Um, I'm a hardware or I'm a person who, who's, who does uh, the supply of building and construction materials. You can get a 1 million limit or even more where we charge, for example, if we take the 1 million, we charge you 25,000 one off. Then for every month of that 1 million, as long as you fully utilize the, the limit, we charge you 1.25 per, per cent, which in this case is 12,500. So it helps you to have a stable um, cash flow it helps you to take advantage of the opportunities. So for example, if today somebody is building a school in your area and you say, I need a, I need a thousand bags of cement, you don't need to think where that money is coming from. As long as you have a line from the bank, you give us a pro forma, we pay the, your supplier, you get the cement and you supply. So what we want as, as cooperative bank is to enable you to take advantage of the opportunity even as they, in, as they, as they emerge. I think for SMEs, what you have seen is that most of them are, they are limited to what the cash they have collected or what you call cash on tier. But where now you have financing and credit, it helps you now to maximize your boundaries and also to do more with your business. We also have agro dealers whereby we look at, uh, right now it is raining in the country. We look at uh, things like fertilizer, pesticides, herbicides, agrovet and seeds. Here we know the cash conversion cycle is longer because rain is seasonal in Kenya. There are some people who do irrigation. 
So by the time you are buying product and selling or using it as an end product, it takes time. So here we have a product that takes 30 to 75 days to, to pay, where we charge 2.5 appraisal fee, one off. Then for every drawdown, we prorate an interest rate of 1.25 per month. We're also looking at pharmaceuticals. Right now, we are seeing um, the country is moving more into generics. Generics means uh, imported medicine from Asia, whereby um, they have taken patents from Western countries and actually producing that, me uh, that medicine at a cheaper price. In country, we have around between 25 to 30 uh, pharmaceutical ma manufacturers. So we are also very interested to support customers in this trade. So here we have a, we have a product also, similar pricing, 2.5 one-off for 12 months, then 1.25% interest per month. What we have seen with pharmaceuticals is that there are those medicines that move fast. So these are mainly painkillers, reproductive health, um, hygiene, uh, medicine. And then now there are those ones that take longer to sell, like the cancer and the, what we call NCDs, non-communicable diseases, cancer, hypertension. Those ones are sold on the go or when the need emerges. But as we are seeing right now, because I think of our diet and also of our, the way uh, we are not doing a lot of exercise, we are seeing NCDs becoming most part of our diseases. And those are now the long term where families and people have to pay long term yearly uh, medicines. So we are also supporting that. We also have food and beverage where we look at distributors who deal with the uh, processed foods. L right now in, in Kenya, 30% of the foods that we eat are, are, are processed foods. If you go to your supermarkets from the bread you buy, from the cornflake, from the what you apply on your on your on your food, uh, tomato sauce. If you're looking at uh, spaghetti, if you're looking at um, cakes, uh, if you look at crisps and chips, we have a lot of processed foods, even drinks. Most of us drink uh, processed juice from companies like Highlands, Coke, and and the rest. And so we we are supporting people in this line of business. So here, because we know it takes shorter time to sell, we have a package of 0.5% per week. It means if your invoice is of 1 million, we only charge you 5,000 per week. Um, if you are taking a longer time, maybe for two weeks, we do 1%. one percent. So it means if you have an invoice of, of um, 1 million, we only charge you 10,000 for two weeks. So here you can go and buy from your provider or from your, your supplier. Talk about the beverage companies we have in Kenya. So many, Qual, um, we have uh, Highlands, we have Coke, we have um, um, Minute Maid, we have Del Monte. You go and buy and then you sell and then you can be able to take advantage of the opportunities. So now also the, the, sec the other sector we have is fuel, LPG and, uh, and, and lubricants. These are people in the energy market. Some of you are selling LPG, some of you are selling um, lubricants, some of you are selling fuel. So for fuel, we, we have a very competitive price. I think the best in the market where we say 0.3% per week. So it means you have an invoice of 1 million, we only charge you 3,000 shillings for one week. I mean, that is so affordable, that is so affordable. And then also we have, um, for those who are doing LPG and lubricants, because it takes longer, we only charge you 2.5 per annum and then 1.25 interest per month pro prorated. So what we are saying is that if you have an account with cooperative bank, how do we get a limit that you can qualify for as a trader or as an M MSME? We look at your 70% of your average last six months turnover. So it means if Kenneth is coming to a branch, for example, if I'm going to Koinange branch and, and I'm saying, I want uh, to be a stock financing limit to do my food and beverage, how much do I qualify for? If, I'm, if, if I've been banking 1 million for the last uh, six months, I automatically qualify for 700,000. Remember, you still have the cash in hand that you have been using in your, in your business. So if you combine both, you're able to expand your business and to grow in a fast pace. I think if we look at the fundamentals of the economy, since we closed last year after the elections, there's been a lot of uh, growth in the last six months. And we are seeing now the international markets are opening up. I think the effects of the um, Russian war and the rest are beginning to subside. And actually right now, uh, China is opening up, I think from the COVID. So we are seeing a, lo a lot of trading opportunities. So what you're saying is that CoBank is at a, good place to support all traders who are who are involved i know some of you will will tell me kenneth what about spare parts what about mitumba what about electronics what about ict 
all of them can fit into our stock financing proposition. We're requesting that you visit your branch. We will leave our contacts here uh, of our customer care. Reach out to us, let us have that discussion. All customers are different, all situations are, are different. Some customers already have existing facilities. Some may require a buyout of their facilities. Some even may want to, 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 to top up. So we are here to handhold you, to give you the right financial advice and to give you the right product for your, for your business. I think this is a picture of um, one of the people that we have, just a, just a stock picture to tell you more about, uh, we want to build your potential as the business. The next slide. So what is the, so for maybe the, from the many words I've said, what I want to give you maybe an FAQ of what are the major, what are the main pointers of what we are doing with stock financing? Who qualifies for stock financing? These are all traders, all MSMEs who are involved in one trade or, or another. Hardwares, wholesalers, dis, distributors, chemists, agro vets, agro dealers, petrol stations, secondary dealers, clothes vehicles. What are the major sectors involved? As I said, building and construction, that is what you call uh, the construction materials. I think um, the government is planning to have affordable housing in each and every county by the end of, the, of this year. So all these guys will be requiring, and I'm seeing, if you look at the profile of the projects, these projects are costing between 1 billion to 5 billion. So all these guys will require cement, they'll require sand, they'll require windows, they'll require timber, they'll require all that. So we are saying that take our product, use it because that is how you take advantage of the opportunities. The government is investing on this. Agrochemicals, and um, we're seeing the government involved investing a lot in agriculture because we are saying that now we, do, we want to reduce our imports and increase our production as a, as, a, as a country. So even as the government does its own direct importation, there is a, there's an opportunity for, for importers and also for agro dealers. So we want also to speak to that ambition. For pharmaceuticals, we also want to support that food and beverage and, and energy. I think if you look at energy, since the prices came up to around 180 last year, most people have been shifting into solar. So what I would advise is that can the businesses represented on, on this call also think outside the box? We are seeing a lot of investment in solar, in batteries. Um, these are the things that we can support you. Get a supplier. Let us pay, you, let us pay for you that invoice, even as, as we engage with the market. How are the limits uh, determined? Average six months account turnover with cooperative bank. Of course, if you come to me and say, Ken, I have an account with uh, maybe another bank. Can we use my 12 months bank statement from that to see how much I can get? Bring it, let's have that discussion. Let's see based on your cash flows with another bank and cooperative bank, how, how we can package you. What is the tenure of stock financing? As, as I've said, it will depend on the industry. We do understand that various uh, products have got separate cash, cash conversion cycles. So we are so seeing we have a maximum 90 days, but for fast moving goods, we have seven to 14 days. I know for pharmaceuticals and agrochemicals, sometimes we do 30 to 60. So all these are, are within the range of our, of our stock financing offer, offering. So what is the pricing for stock financing? For fuel is 0 0.3, for other FMCG is 0 0.5 for one week or 1% or, or for two weeks. That is mainly food and beverage. For the rest, um, uh, building and construction, pharmaceuticals and agro dealers, 2.5 one off per annum, 1.25 interest per month. We can go to that. So also as cooperative bank, we have got um, different account types. So what we are saying, if I've banked with cooperative bank, maybe for the last one year, my cash flows pass through the bank. We also do what we call cash flow lending. It means if Kenneth has been banking maybe above 5 million per month, I can qualify for that. So sorry for that. That automatically qualifies me for five million shillings, unsecured. If I'm, if my banking is uh, ten million, on average, I can get ten million unsecured based now on the on the gold package. And for bronze, we give up to 600,000 unsecured. So what you're saying is that your cash flows within cooperative bank are not in vain. 
you can actually come to us and say, I've been banking with you for this, for the last six months or one year. What unsecured limit can you give me? Because remember, your cash flows within the bank are also a form of security. So, and also our, our products in terms of, uh, of accounts, like for gold, you get many other benefits. You get a checkbook, you get a collection account, you get COP online, you get a merchant, you get LNM, Lipa uh, na Mpesa. So there are many other value added, value added products you get by having also a package account with, with us. So even as you come to discuss with us about uh, stock financing, come also and also let us see what package would fit you because we want to sell a, a fully embedded solution so that we are saying, since my cash flows are this, I can get an unsecured limit of this amount for my loan. I can get a um, till solution for my collections. I can get a card. I can get a COP online so that I can log into my business, see my statements, do my transfers. Even as I'm doing other, other things, I don't have to come to the, to, the, to the branch. So we are really, really here to support you. And we are really, really keen to um, give you the right, the right advice and solutions. So I want to stop there. Uh, take any, any questions from the panel or from the floor. And then from there, see what are the next steps. But uh, what I can say is that uh, we are really keen also to take advantage of the opportunity. Um, the rains are here. The economy seems to be having an uptick. So you need the liquidity and the financing to take advantage of the opportunities. Thank you so much for the time. Very good. Thank you so much for support for product supply. Uh, did you want to comment on that? Sorry, I haven't heard your previous question. Sorry, my line was... was um, I was just saying, I'm just going to refer to a few questions. Um, yes, as Maxwell please. is asking about LPO, I think you mentioned, do you want to just touch on it again? LPO support for product supply? Maxwell Mumia is asking a question around that. Thank you. Thank you, Maxwell, for the question. So for LPO, we have a product that finances up to 60% of an LPO. It will depend on the, on the company that has issued the LPO. So Maxwell, I think uh, what we have seen right now is that we are very careful also as a, as, a, as a bank in terms of the advice we give to our to our clients. Right now, if you look at the government, if you look at counties, even if you are doing mm -hmm. a supply, it takes a lot of time for them to repay you. So, so the advice we are, we, are, we are giving is that go to a an organization that is well-placed, that is liquid enough, that has been doing well. Uh, we recommend private organizations and even for those government entities that you want to deal with, ensure that they have a good payment uh, uh, history. You don't want to do uh, an LPO for a company that has, that, that has not paid suppliers since 2017 or 2018. You want somebody that can pay you. So we do up to 60% of an LPO and um, um, you can come, we discuss uh, whether you, we, it will be fully unsecured or will require some form of, of security, but it is something that we support uh, up to 60%. Very good. Somebody has asked what is an yeah. LPO. Uh, an LPO is a local purchase order. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it would mean that if Kenneth maybe is going to um, uh, maybe, uh, maybe Kenya Power, Kenya Power wants the supply of maybe what we call uh, pipes or maybe what you call timber for their poles. They'll give me a, an LPO, mm -hmm. then based on that, I will come to the bank and say, I have this LPO from Kenya Power. They want me to, uh, to, su to supply this. Can you finance me too, to fulfill this, uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, this order? So that's the nature of an LPO. So, so in this case, Kenya Power has committed to go through with this. Correct, correct. Because now, okay. from an LPO pa perspective, you have the commitment of an anchor that as long as Kenneth yeah. has applied, they are going to take up that They're product. Yeah. So based on that, based now on that commitment from the anchor who's, who's Kenya Power, you can come to the bank and ask for, for financing. Okay, very good. I'm just looking at uh, if we have any other questions. I know Peter, you Peter has responded to some of the questions. Peter, did you want to make a general comment on one of the two or three questions you just answered in for the sake of everyone else? Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Kip, and thank you, Sam, um, for, for taking us through that session. I think a few questions are regarding e-credits. 
uh, and I was ask, uh, asking how do you keep on uh, changing the, the limits in terms of the reviews, uh, and, and, and someone is saying that I've been stuck with a certain amount uh, of money as he said. But, uh, but I have score uh, just to, to help us know where we want to, find, to, to put you at that particular time. Because some of you, you will find you possibly uh, took another loan and your obligations for repayments are higher than they used to be. Or you find that you possibly struggled in paying the first loan. So we, we the score is able to look at that and uh, able to say, uh, we want to take you up or you want you to remain to where you want, you in, or uh, possibly you will uh, limit you be reduced. Uh, the other thing we also look at is the cash flows, very, very important. And I think that Keep has also talked about it. Just ensure that your bankings are consistent. And if possible, you are increasing the bankings uh, to the accounts that is held with us. So I think that that's the comment that I've seen. Um, should there be any question, please feel free to share. Uh, your issues and the questions that you have also uh, through the business banking uh, email. Uh, I'll be able to share the same on uh, the chat. Thank you, thank you, uh, Sam, for that. Very good, thank you so much. And ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to 12.30, so we should be coming to a quick wrap up here. Um, as usual, we want to remind you about a call to action. Peter, would you help me with this? Okay, uh, thank you, thank you again. Um, uh, this is a very, very informative session and I think I really appreciate uh, the two speakers uh, and I think we'll continue having the same uh, kind of a presentation uh, even for the other upcoming uh, Thursdays. So our advice to us uh, is to be really, um, to encourage all of us to visit our branches for more information, and especially on our COP, COP stock financing solutions that uh, Kenneth have taken us through. Uh, we have what we call the digital solutions, uh, the, 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 M, the uh, COP TIL, the M collection, and so all the digital solutions that we have, and, and I'm sure we have been able to take us through. Take advantage of the same to continuously bank and make payments. Um, as you notice, uh, businesses will continue to innovate and adapt, and uh, you'll find yourself uh, having some uh, financing needs. We encourage you that you share the same uh, with our branch managers and also our, uh, through our relationship managers in the branches. They will be able to uh, support you again on the same. Uh, we have all these recordings on our MSME online portal. If you go to our website, you will uh, be able to go to MSME uh, portal and you'll be able to get all the recordings through the link that you've shared uh, down there, the HTTPS. Please visit there, just get the recordings um, should you have missed other uh, previous sessions. And I'm sure you'll be able to benefit and get more details of the same. Uh, I think from where we sit, um, it's really to appreciate all of you again for visiting and uh, visiting the, the session and being part of this session. We hope that you uh, you benefited. I, I don't know whether Sam, you want us okay. to go through the demo. No. I can... Yes, okay. I'll show you. I'm, I'm just going to go. Thank you so much, Peter. Um, allow me to. So I promised for those who are wondering, how do I get this recording? I feel like I've missed a lot on all those things. We're going to go through. It's 30 seconds of a recording. I want us to see it's three steps there's a link that's going to be shared in the chat and when you get to the link go to knowledge hub and then webinars but this is what it looks like visually so if you want to go to google just go ahead and type in pop bank uh just go ahead and type in pop bank uh photo just uh, the, the msme portal okay so as soon as you click on that it will take you right to this link to the cop bank website and then just go to Knowledge Hub and Webinars. So link, the link, and that's where you find all these sessions that we've done in the past, quite a number of them, inside, uh, very insightful, very, very useful. Uh, it's of information that you can use. 
All right. So the link should be in the chat right now. That's the last thing we'll be providing for you. That's it. There you go. I thank you, Charles Dololo, for local purchase order, the full name. All right. So thank you. We want to say a big thank you to you. Uh, if you have any communication that you'd like to make, please reach out to us as pop as AMI. You can reach out to us, talk to us. The numbers are here. Um, email, WhatsApp line, phone number, call, whatever you is easiest to you, please reach out. And if you have any ideas.